Is creatine really needed? Probably. It depends on where you are and where you want to go, of course. Are you a vegan, a vegetarian, or genetically gifted? Well, the creatine answers there would be yes, probably, and probably not. But for most of us, creatine can be a positive supplement if we use it correctly. Despite all the hype, the cost, and the naysayers, creatine actually has well-proven benefits when it comes to athletic performance. And therefore, we should all consider taking advantage of it. Okay, let's get into it. So what does creatine actually do? Well, it's been long concluded that creatine helps you build muscles faster, improve performance, and look bigger after an intense workout. There is even some evidence that creatine can help with brain function and cognitive improvement as well. These benefits have been so widely adopted that as much as 50% of professional and collegiate athletes use creatine as a supplement. And it's long been touted as the supplement of choice for young men early on their muscle development journeys. Okay, so what is it doing exactly? Oversimplified, creatine is an energy source. A nitrogen-based energy source that is very similar to protein as the makeup of creatine is from amino acids. Note that essential amino acids are essential because our body does not produce them. That is, we need to consume them. One of the three amino acids in creatine is essential, methionine. So while our bodies can produce the majority of amino acids in creatine, the last part must be obtained through food or supplementation. Why is this important? Well, the diet of a person will determine creatine levels in their body and to increase creatine levels to the extent that we see athletic performance improvements, we need to consume it in the form of supplementation. Those who are vegetarian or vegan are not getting the essential amino acids in the quantities that meat and fish eaters do, and therefore will not have the natural creatine stores as others. And creatine is stored in skeletal muscles. And when we have the ingredients from food like steak and fish, our body will synthesize creatine in our liver and kidneys and then store that creatine in our muscles to be used when we work out. Our muscles use multiple sources of energy that we can utilize when lifting weights or working out hard. A creatine-based source of energy is called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. ATP is only stored in limited amounts in our muscles and we tend to burn through ATP quickly if our workout is intense. And we advocate high intensity workouts, hit or very heavy lifting with a relatively short rep count, eight to be exact. So the muscle energy source for these high intensity workouts is ATP. When ATP is burned during a workout, it's converted into ADP. That is, the energy source is broken down and needs to be replenished. Enter creatine. Creatine, in a creatine phosphate form, is what can then turn the spent ADP form of energy into the usable ATP form of energy for that high intensity workout. This is a crude oversimplification, but effectively creatine helps us in a high intensity workout to extend that workout for more intervals or more reps and ultimately more weight and muscle growth down the road. Here is the critical point. We need to have enough creatine in our system to enable us to work out harder and longer. And this is where supplementation comes in. So can more creatine in our bodies for ATP improve our workouts? The answer is yes. So how much improvement are we talking about? Studies have shown that guys can see up to 30% improvement in strength and muscle mass. This of course depends on your starting point. Typical gains are about half that, or around 15%. As we mentioned, the amino acids that form creatine come from sources like meat and fish. So meat eaters will not see the higher levels of strength improvement as much as vegetarians or vegans, who do not have the same stores of those amino acids. And that makes sense. Note though, that meat eaters will typically have more muscle stores than vegans due to this as well. And there is a small minority of people out there who have max levels of creatine in their bodies naturally or fully saturated with creatine such that any supplementation is ineffective. But for our purposes, we are going on the fact that the majority of the people are not oversaturated and a creatine boost will help. All right, so how do we use creatine as a supplement? 
Looking from a 30-day perspective, we're examining the amount of creatine and the time involved to get our muscles fully saturated to see the most effective gains in athletic performance. So looking over this 30-day period, the common term for it is loading. We are gonna look more at gradual loading as opposed to the heavy initial overloading. The reason for this is it's a bit more gentle on the body and has more examination behind it. If you are interested in the fast track overloading, there are plenty of resources online for that. It's basically adding more creatine in the first week of loading then tapering off for the rest of the month. But given that our aim is long-term sustained health and gains, we're gonna proceed with the more gradual approach. So the amount of creatine to supplement is about five grams per day. If taken daily, the muscles in your body will reach maximum saturation levels in about two to three weeks. So you will want to get some powdered creatine supplements and take about five grams a day for 30 days. And we should start to see marginal improvements around the third week or so. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the side effects that taking creatine as a supplement could cause. There is research showing individuals will gain some weight when taking it. But the weight gain is mostly water and is only about one to three pounds. So overall is an insignificant side effects, all things considered. And if your goal is to bulk up, then the water gain will actually make your muscles look more full and pumped. More common would be nausea or an upset stomach. In this case, there are a few solutions. First, lower the creatine amount from five grams down to about three grams per day. This will allow for your system to become more accustomed to the supplementation or you can split that five gram dose into smaller doses equaling five grams. Second, take creatine on a full stomach. We hear this all the time from doctors when they prescribe medications. The food in the stomach will slow the absorption and keep the nausea at bay. Last is to make sure the creatine is fully dissolved before consuming. You sometimes see guys scooping a spoonful into their mouth and then chasing it with a glass of water. Instead, dissolve the creatine in the water and fully stir it before drinking it down. So once you're fully loaded with creatine in about three weeks, what should you expect? Well, it's not a magic performance pill. You're not gonna be running faster or lifting insane amounts of weight right off the bat, but you will start to see workout gains. The average eight to 14% strength gains will materialize in your workouts over the long term. It may be one or two reps here and there, or it may be adding in another interval to your hit routine. But as you go past that 30 day loading period into a period of maintenance, you will continue to add those gains. So an example would be seeing an additional rep or interval each week or two. Over the course of several weeks, the performance improvement could be quite substantial. And for weightlifting, our aim is eight reps of high intensity. Over time, that will be eight reps with heavier weights, equaling larger muscle mass along with the strength gains. Additionally, studies have shown that the recovery time between workouts is faster when your muscles are loaded with creatine. This, of course, is critical for athletes and is quite good for those who do not recover as quickly as they did when they were younger. And as we know, muscle recovery is absolutely essential for muscle growth. Finally, is all this safe? The answer is yes. Several studies have been conducted with this question in mind. And while there is a byproduct of creatine that is called creatinine that is commonly an indicator of poor kidney health, the studies have shown that elevated levels of creatinine did not indicate any health abnormalities in organs due to the ingestion of creatine as a supplement. As always, check with your healthcare provider if you have any concerns or a history of issues. So creatine can be part of your overall plan for long-term health. And a loading of our muscles with creatine might just be the answer that propels us closer to our ultimate fitness ideal. Check out this video for more male fitness mastery, and we will see you there.